Hi, pipe smokers. This is Paul the Pipe Guy, live from Rochester, New York, in the United States of America. And it's time for Two for Tuesday. Grab your favorite adult beverage. Uh, mine is Bush Beer. Yes. And grab your favorite pipe that you feel like smoking today, <clears throat> along with your favorite blend. Ah, yes. Happy Two for Tuesday. Cheers. So, in our first pipe, we have this beautiful tankard pipe, which I've smoked before. It has a beautiful little GBD medallion in there. And this one is uh, a GBD International London Made. The bowl number is, uh, it says London, England, bowl number 1006. And it is a beauty. I suspect this to be somewhat old, although I haven't really tried to date it. But it's a tankard style pipe. And uh, <clears throat> I don't use a filter in this one either. It has a stinger type of system, which I don't even like stinger systems. Actually, I think this stinger system I thought was removable. I probably could remove it if I wanted to. Uh, and the only reason why I would want to do that is to get a better draw off of it. But we're not going to do that. I mean, you can remove it and put them back in. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. So, in that beautiful GBD, I have some Robert McConnell, the original Scottish blend. Ooh, yeah. And we'll read real quick uh, what that has. Robert McConnell, original Scottish blend, a rather strong mixture in the English style, made of full-bodied black Cavendish, naturally sweet Virginia, smoky. Natakia. Yeah. Exotic Oriental, Turkish, and a pinch of spicy Perique, which is very balanced and rich in aroma. Mmm. And that is good, yes. So we're going to light that one up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that Scottish blend is awesome. So we're up to uh, 366 subscribers. Keeps ticking back and forth between 366, 365, 366. It's kind of stalled out there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Robert McConnell Scottish Blend. The original Scottish Blend. And it is extremely good. I've done tobacco reviews on every tobacco that I own. So if you go back through my videos, there should be about 60 of them, 70 of them on there. Definitely strong, but you know what? It's not like overbearingly strong or anything. Just a good smoke. Something that you'd like to have early in the morning or <clears throat> later in the evening. I really want to try, try that uh, Squadron Leader. Don't know if anybody's tried Squadron Leader, but it's been back-ordered for a while now. 
at least a couple months. So I, uh, my daughter works at a uh, large gas station change chain. It's like got a little mini mart. It's called Speedway. They used, it used to be owned by Hess, Emirata Hess. <coughs> so they were all Hess gas stations. And she turned 18 in February and recently got a job there. And she's very, very beautiful. She has long, strawberry blonde, reddish hair. Actually, it used to be copper red, and then she changed the color of it, but she's still beautiful. And, uh... She got off of her shift last night, and it was dark. She went to walk home, which is not far away at all, right around the corner. One of her regular customers pulled up and asked her if she wanted to be part of his business. And she's like, what kind of business is that? Yeah, basically doing adult films and stuff like that. Just great. She freaked out, called the police, and uh, they made filed a police report. And I'm in there every day. And I told her, I says, if I'm in here and that guy's ever in here, point him out to me. Because I'll tell you what, a guy that's about ready to be 57 years old, that's raised six sons, four beautiful daughters, has lost two sons who have passed on, is not afraid to go to jail. And I don't know about you other folks, but I think this person, this individual who made my daughter an offer, we would definitely have at least some words, if not more. He might fall down and hit his head on the pavement. Jeez. Here, let me help you up. Oh, you fell down again. You hit your head again. Oh, you went flying through the front window of the store. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, but I would think about it. I definitely have a chat with him and say, hey, don't ever talk to my daughter again because I am not afraid to go to jail. And I lift heavy metal parts all day long, nine hours a day, six days a week. And I could easily lift you up. That infuriates me, the uh, type of individuals that prey on our young women. thing. Oh, all the way home after my daughter told me that when I saw her at work today. I was just thinking, you know, if that guy went in there, tried to perform an armed robbery or something like that, ooh, he'd be going out in a body bag. And that ain't just talk. Anyways, let's switch the subject. That one's kind of a heavy one. I thought I had myself set up with a couple of beers here, but no. I'll be right back. Ah, yes, yeah, so we're back. So, um, yeah, so I'm working hard today, and I get a text from my roommate, and uh, he's like, I opened up the medicine cabinet and a little blue bottle fell out and went down the sink and it's plugged up now. And I was like, no worries. When I get home, 
I'll just take the trap off. I know the trap is new. The trap is the part that is like a U-shaped type of thing that won't let stuff go down into the wall and plug everything up. So I got that off and then I realized that it had gone in further. There's another like little trap that then goes up and then curves over and then goes into the wall and straight down to the uh, into the sewer system. So that part I did not replace. That is original to 1967 and and in taking that apart it just disintegrated in my hands. So I said, well, it says uh, we won't be able to use the sink until after I get home from work tomorrow and stop and get the part. And I said, it's no big deal. I'm not upset. I said, actually, it's probably a good thing that little blue bottle fell into the sink because when I went to take that part off, the second part, like I said, it just crumbled in my hands. I mean, uh, and if I didn't discover that, very soon it would have started leaking down into the wall, which definitely would not be good. So I told him he's going to have to shave in the shower. Oh, well, you want to drop little blue bottles down the sink? And then I got to come home and tear everything apart. <laughs> and I had already had one beer. And I'm not even going to have one beer and drive to the store. He can go without. Me, personally, I shave in the shower. Well, no, actually, I use the sink, but I've shaved in the shower. I could put the wastebasket underneath the sink. But I didn't want to give him that option. When I shave tonight, that's what I'll do, though. i got a big waste basket in the... And that'll catch all the water that I need it to. And then I'll just throw it out in the lawn. I'll shave in the sink. He won't. <laughs> so anyways, I didn't want to make him feel bad about it. So, our second pipe uh, is called the Everyman London Pipe. And um, it says, made in England by Kamois, bowl number 588. And it is almost identical to the GBD, very similar. Ah, yes. And in that, we have Officers Club by East India Trading Company. <clears throat> Very glad I bought six tins of this, because this is unbelievable. I'll read you very quickly what's in it. East India Trading Company Officers Club. Officers, Officers Club combines Virginia's, Burley's, and Black Cavendish with rum. Gentle spices and creamy vanilla that will make you think of a decadent dessert. Officers Club will be truly satisfying after a hearty evening meal. And let me tell you, this stuff is great. I've almost gone through, I've gone through about three quarters of one tin of this. I have five left. When I get down to three tins, I'm going to order ten of them. It's that good. So, let's light her up. But first, we must clear the palate. Ah, yes. Oh, yeah, you can taste the rum. Mm. The vanilla, what other topping spices they put on there. The Virginia's. Just a wonderful smoke. This would be a great smoke after like, let's say uh, you have like a 7 o'clock dinner with uh, steak, mashed potatoes, gravy, uh, just a full robust meal. 
a little ice cream afterwards maybe. This would be something great to have with just a little shot of drambuie. sip on that little drambuie. Has anybody ever had drambuie? It's really good, but you don't want to drink a lot of it. There's the sugar content and alcohol content so high. Man, that'll give you an evil hangover. I think the worst hangover I've ever had is about 19 or 20 years old. And I was drinking peppermint schnapps, like the stuff that, not the real high test stuff, it was 40% alcohol, which makes it 80 proof. Like the Rumple Mitts, I think, is a 90 or 100 proof. But it was so sweet, and it was going down so good, and I'll tell you what, I think I drank about half a quarter of that stuff. And the next day, I had such a pounding headache. Oh, yeah. This officer's club is really good. If you like rum-based, um, rum and vanilla, oh, Officer's Club is the way to go. That's actually my favorite go-to tobacco right now. And this pipe is a great smoker, this Comweiss. Well, I'm not going to take the stem off, but there's no apparatus inside of there. It just goes straight through. You never want to remove the stem from the shank when the pipe is being smoked or it's warm or you can crack, you, you can crack the, the shank. So what are you guys and gals smoking and drinking on our two for Tuesday? Yeah, I kind of got it kicked off a little late because I really just wanted to come home and get that <coughs> bathroom sink unplugged and fixed. and That didn't work out so good. It took me about 20 minutes of jerking around with that. So I got that pipe, in fact, uh, let me grab that and show that to you. I actually did a review on this pipe. I'll, I'll be right back. This is my latest purchase. I haven't purchased a pipe in quite a while. It's a uh, octagon-shaped, uh, handmade by Brian... 
handmade by Brian Kelnitz. And uh, oh, just a beautiful pipe. What a great smoker. It's got 100 year old briar aged. The only thing this guy uses to make his pipes that's electrical is a bandsaw. He doesn't use a lathe or anything. It's all done by eye. And I mean, you can look at that, and that is spot on. Very hard shape to make, but that's a great, great smoker. Wasn't cheap. I paid $120 plus tax and delivery. By the time I was all said and done, it was like $132 out the door. But I did call the shop and they said it was a $300 pipe, so I think I did get it. I had to have it, right? Do you ever have something that you just have to have? Ah, oh, yes. clear the palette. We're going to go back to our beautiful GBD tankard pipe. And the briar on this is just absolutely stunning. The briar on both these pipes is absolutely stunning. Flawless. There's not one flaw in here. In fact, these pipes, neither one of them, uh, well, let's see, the uh, Kamois has absolutely no teeth chatter. I'm sorry, the Kamois has just the tiniest bit of tooth chatter, just, you could, you'd never be able to see it on the video, but I can see it here in bright light. Uh, the GBD has no tooth chatter at all, looks like it just came out of the box, I mean it's like brand new. And I suspect this one probably has a little age under its belt. I think when my daughter turns 21, because in New York State, you have to be 21 to legally own a handgun, and you have to apply for a New York State pistol permit, which I have one, since March 21st of 1989. But I think my daughter, Bianca, I think when she turns 21, I'll have her get her pistol permit and uh, we'll get her one that'll suit her. And then there's a man that I know that owns Rochester Personal Defense and uh, they have actual instruction for self-defense uh, lessons for just made just for women. Have her go through that. So I got about another two and a half more years to go before she could do that. But what's funny, New York State is so anti-gun. All right, now she lost two brothers. So instead of doing something stupid, she reached out and says, Hey, Mom, Dad, I, I need to get a little counseling for this. Well, that goes on your medical record, which is supposed to be private. But you go to apply for a New York State pistol permit, they're going to look into that. If you take anxiety medication or if you take a little medication for depression because things have gone bad, you lose two brothers, you're going to be pretty bummed out. Well, they look into all that stuff.
there was a guy when they first started all this BS up, I think they kind of laid back on it a little bit, New York State government. The guy had never had even a parking ticket. He had a New York State pistol permit, legally owned his handguns, didn't have a lot of them, legally owned all of his registered uh, long rifles, And his mother passed away, and he was having a lot of problems. This is in the next county over. Went to his doctor, went to some counseling. They put him on a little depression medication for a short period of time. It was only like six weeks. Didn't the state police come in and seize all of his firearms? Yeah, they said, oh, you're taking depression medication. You can't own firearms. People are afraid to seek help, at least in this state. So they go untreated, deal with it themselves, which uh, that's what I've done. I didn't go on depression medication when my kids died or anything like that. You know, I just, it was me and the big guy upstairs. Took the state to court and freaking won. They returned his pistol permit and all of his firearms. A lot of politics behind firearms, especially in New York State. I'm sure there is throughout the, the world. Um... You know, there's uh, a lot of states in the United States where you don't even need a permit to own a handgun. Uh, you can just go in and buy one, which I think is, you know, I don't know what I think about that. Well, I do know what I think about that. I don't think you should have to go through the state and file for a pistol permit. But I do believe in an extensive background check. I really do. Uh, which every state must do, regardless of if they require you to have a state permit to own a handgun or not. You still have to go through a federal firearms background check. And they look at any arrest records, uh, any me mental health arrests, and any... Anything that would show up that you may have done wrong in the past uh, or arrested for or whatever is going to show up. Uh, so, my grandson is due less than a month from now and uh, I can't wait to meet him I got to see pictures uh, my daughter had an ultrasound the other day that's amazing the ultrasounds that they have now versus like when my kids were you know being born and they be when they were in the womb I mean now it looks like you're looking right at a black and white picture of them. Uh, the, it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Officers Club. Definitely an all-day smoke. Officers Club by East India Trading Company. The Scottish blend is great. But it is strong, and I wouldn't smoke it all day. I'm sure I'd get tongue bite from it. But it's, it would be great to have one or two bowls like after dinner. Oh, yeah. 
Well, we just rounded 30 minutes for two for Tuesday. Hope you all have a great rest rest of your uh, week. And uh, I'm Paul the Pipe Guy. Thanks for tuning in for Two for Tuesday. What do you guys think about, I mean, what happened to my daughter with that weirdo? I mean, what would you guys do? <laughs> Some, most pipe smokers are men and women of few words, but they act. I'm not going to take the law into my own hands. But, anyways, we'll leave it at that. I'm Paul the Pipe Guy, live from Rochester, New York. Thanks for tuning in for Tuesday. Have the great rest of your week, and we'll see you on Thursday, Thursday, in a couple days. Over and out.